Cops turn robbers? What one business owner claims officers are getting away with in broad daylight. Plus, up to no good. The man accused of shooting and nearly killing an APD officer is in trouble once again this morning. What officers found during the shakedown? Also surprising discovery after a police chase. What officers found inside a car that's sparking a criminal investigation? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the 6 o'clock hour on KRQE News 13 this morning. I'm Adam Atchison. Good morning, everyone. I'm Crystal Gutierrez. Thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday, April 22nd. Happy Earth Day mm -hmm. to you. We are celebrating Earth Day today on the KRQE News uh, program. And, and Kristen Curry has had some trivia for us all morning, but right now she's talking about uh, what you may face as far as the temperatures go today. Kristen. <laughs> good morning, guys. Yes, trivia to come. The next one's going to be a good one. We'll start with a look at those morning temperatures. Notice the temperature change. We're going to two degrees warmer here in the Duke City right now compared to 24 hours ago, much warmer up in Taos. And for the most part, most of the state is waking up to a little bit of a climb in the numbers. Leaves us in the 30s and 40s across most of northern New Mexico, 40s and 50s that across the southern portions of the state. 49 degrees right now here in the Duke City. We'll take the 40s, turn them into 70s today. So another warm day on tap across the area. Cold front that will start to make its way in across the northeastern plains today, giving way to some thunderstorms. By the time we hit tomorrow and Friday, that's when a little bit more of a better chance it comes in for most of us to see scattered showers, but they're going to be very hit or miss. So a lot to uh, work out with this next system coming in. I'll be breaking down what you need to know in your neighborhood coming up here in just a bit. All right, thanks, Kristen. We start with this a mysterious discovery after a chase and a car crash. State police say there was a body in the back of this car. It started at around 3.30 yesterday afternoon in Bernalillo. A state police officer tried to stop a driver for a traffic violation. That driver then took off. Police say the car crashed into a van in a concrete barrier about a mile away, eastbound on Highway 550. But after a chase, then a crash, it's what state police found inside the car that sparked a criminal investigation. When they approached the vehicle to clear the vehicle, they, they observed the deceased body in the back of the vehicle. State police first said the person was already dead before the crash, but then backtracked, saying it's too early to tell. State police took two men, the driver and passenger, into custody, but they're not facing charges just yet as investigators wait on a warrant to search that car. Police say the driver of the van that was hit went to the hospital, but he was not seriously hurt. 603, a judge is saying no to former Rio Arriba County Sheriff Tommy Rodella's request to be released while he appeals his sentence. Rodella is currently serving 10 years in a Texas federal prison for violating a man's civil rights during an off duty traffic stop. The driver said that Rodella pulled a gun on him. Rodella will also have to pay a $200,000 fine. The man who police say shot an APD officer four times during a DWI stop is in trouble with the law again. Jail guards say they found a shank in Christopher Cook's cell. Cook was in court yesterday on those new charges. He's already facing an attempted murder charge for shooting Officer Lou Golson earlier this year. He's accused of doing that. Golson is still recovering. We turn out to this this morning in Albuquerque. Homeowners hoping someone will recognize this crook caught on their home surveillance camera. The system captured the guy in the act, helping himself to someone else's belongings in a Knob Hill home. The homeowner says a thief made off with about $5,000 worth of valuables. They're now hoping that clear pictures will help catch the guy and serve as a warning to other homeowners. Drowsy driving may be to blame for a deadly crash on old Route 66 early yesterday morning. Deputies say a 23-year-old woman driving a white SUV crossed the center line, then hit an SUV traveling the opposite direction. The driver of that SUV died. He's been identified as 58-year-old Robert Gonzalez of Tijeras. The name of the female driver is not being released just yet. At last word, no charges have been filed against her. New this morning, the money mess in Santa Fe may be bigger than many first thought. The city's, city's internal auditor is now pointing out there are too many missing records when it comes to the $30 million spent on park projects. An accounting firm pointed out that the city of Santa Fe mishandled those funds approved from a 2008 bond. Instead of bidding out, city employees handled the projects. And now, according to the Santa Fe New Mexican, the city's auditor says conducting a full audit would be a waste because of a lack of records. This comes just days after the state auditor says he's now stepping in. 
Plans for a controversial waste transfer station in Albuquerque are moving forward today. This after a large crowd packed a room yesterday as the city unveiled its plans for the facility on Edith and Comanche. Neighbors who live in the North Valley do not want trash collected there. They're concerned about traffic, the smell and noise the dump will bring into their neighborhood. The city says this move will actually save money. Opponents, though, are trying to halt the building of that transfer station. We turn out to this. The fallout of the massive Bluebell recall continues. Now the feds say they are aware of 10 listeria illnesses from the ice cream products dating back to 2010. The Texas company recalled all of its products yesterday after two samples of the ice cream tested positive for listeria. Bluebell says it's now beefing up employee training and expanding its sanitation and cleaning system. Luckily, none of the illnesses were reported here in New Mexico. And the latest recall comes as the Food and Drug Administration may still be months away from new rules to keep your food safe. In 2011, the Food Safety Modernization Act was signed into law. Its purpose is to shift the focus from responding to contamination to preventing it. Some of the new requirements for food manufacturers will include food safety plans, recall plans, and better training programs. The new controls are expected to be released come August. Happening today, jurors in Boston will begin day two of the sentencing phase for convicted Boston Marathon bomber Jokar Zarnaev. Yet yeah, prosecutors opened their arguments for the death penalty yesterday by showing an image of Zarnaev making an obscene gesture at a courtroom camera just three months after the bombings. It was an emotional day as victims shared their stories with the jurors. Now, if the jury is not unanimous, Zarnaev will receive life in prison. New video this morning shows what happened the moments before an Oklahoma Reserve deputy fatally shot a suspect who was pinned down by other officers. We've learned that deputy will be allowed to leave the country while awaiting trial. The video shows the interaction between Robert Bates and the man who was shot, Eric Harris. According to the Tulsa County Volunteer, he had confused his stun gun and handgun. Yesterday, he pleaded not guilty to second-degree manslaughter charges. The judge also okayed his request to vacation in the Bahamas. If convicted, Bates could face four years in prison. A Houston businessman says two officers broke into his business and robbed it. This morning, the owner says he has the video to prove it. Take a look at this. Marquette Jones says this video shows the Houston police officer kicking at his door once inside. Jones claims the officers took a bag with several thousand dollars in it and claims this is not the first time they've stolen from him. He's now requesting the DA's office to conduct an independent investigation into this. And we'll stay on top of that and let you know the list. Chaos in the cafeteria. What sparked this high school brawl and the disciplinary action school officials are now taking? Plus, demonstrations continue following the death of a man whose spinal cord was severely damaged. The mystery surrounding his death and what protesters are calling for today. And what students had to say to the feds about rape on UNM's campus. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to KRQE News 13 this morning. I'm Krista Gutierrez. And I'm Adam Atchison. It's Wednesday, Earth Day, April 22nd. We're glad you're along with us. We're going to get to the top stories in a moment, but first we're going to look at the forecast. And this Earth Day is really shaping up to be a really nice day. Let's get right to Kristen Curry. That's right, guys. Really it's similar to yesterday in the way the forecast, even warmer in the afternoon. But notice some morning temperatures. 39 up in Taos is a good 10 degrees warmer than where you started the day yesterday. 49 here in the Duke City and the 50s scattered out across the southern portions of the state. For the kiddos walking to the bus stop this morning here in Albuquerque, 7 a.m. temperature looking to be about 50 degrees underneath that mostly clear sky. Still cool enough, though, to need a light jacket this morning. No need for it later today. We're talking warm temperatures in the 70s and a plenty of sunshine here in the Duke City, but areas to the north and east will be looking at a chance for some strong thunderstorms today. Cold front will help get those storms to, to go and really the cooler air is only filling in from here tomorrow even cooler. Friday looks to be the coolest day of the next seven. We'll have a look at those numbers here coming up. Thanks so much, Kristen. Happening today, the feds are expected to continue their investigation into how UNM handles rape cases. Last night, they held the first of three meetings where investigators heard from students. More than a dozen students were part of the roundtable talks. One participant who asked that we not identify her said she was actually surprised that so many people showed up. Rape is awkward. No one wants to talk about it or admit that that happened to them. Um, so. I honestly thought that we were going to be like the only two people. <laughs> 
So the feds launched their initial investigation into how UNM handles sex crimes back in December after getting a series of complaints about the university from students. Students told investigators once they reported sex crimes, they did not feel like they were taken seriously. There are two more DOJ meetings and the feds have set up a phone number and email address for students to talk about their concerns. We have the details on that on our KRQE News app. Just days before the DOJ's visit, UNM allowed a man accused of raping a child to play in Sunday's Grass Bash Volleyball Tournament on campus. That tournament included girls as young as 12. Former New Mexico Juniors Volleyball coach Ryan Kapasinski was fired last year after he admitted to police that he had sex with a 15-year-old Los Lunas girl. A spokesperson with the Lobo Athletic Department said in an email, Kapasinski is a UNM student and he has all the rights and privileges of being a student, but others don't agree. I'd definitely be uncomfortable, especially when I know that children are around him. Sources say the tournament's organizers knew about Kapusinski's past. He is allowed to be around children while he awaits his trial. He just can't be around his alleged victim. And we turn out to this protests like this. They could continue today in Baltimore after the death of a man while in the custody of police. The family of Freddie Gray joined others in protest yesterday. Protesters say they will take their case to Baltimore's mayor on tomorrow, rather, with a rally at City Hall. The U.S. Justice Department is now looking into the death of the 25 year old who died from a spinal cord injury. Gray was arrested April 12th after police say he and another man ran from officers. You can see Gray here being carried into a police van in video obtained by a CBS station there. Another piece of video shows officers removing Gray from the van to shackle his legs at a stop. Now, protesters are calling for the officers involved to face charges. I want murder for all six of them because there was no history or record of him having any spinal injuries. All six police officers can't say what happened. The mayor has acknowledged in the press that he called for media uh, medical attention and nobody gave it to him. So at this time, those officers have been suspended with pay while an investigation continues. The Justice Department will be looking into if there were any civil rights violations. Coming up on 635, new numbers show APD's efforts to scout new officers are paying off. APD tweeted last night that the department had 51 applications in the last 24 hours after announcing new initiatives. The mayor and police chief unveiled new recruiting tactics on Monday, including a lower college credit requirement. For a look at all of the new requirements, you can read this story on the KRQE News app. We turn out to developing news. New allegations from a former prosecutor could have D.A. Carrie Brandenburg heading back to the courtroom after claims her office fired him over comments he made about her. Evan Woodward was an assistant D.A. for about nine months before losing his job in January after claims he did not get along with coworkers. But Woodward says he was fired because he raised concerns about Brandenburg's legal problems and the murder case against the APD officers who shot James Boyd. When I raised my concerns, they were not political in nature. You know, I just really believe that the office was ignoring the model rules of ethics. So we called the DA's office, but they tell us they do not comment on personnel matters. The mayor says he's trying to make the city a cooler, hipper place to be. Sounds like a lot of fun, yeah, right? Sure now a grant is expected to help transform Civic Plaza. News 13's Catherine Mazone spoke with the mayor about the push. She's live at Civic Plaza. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning, Crystal. Now you've seen the basketball hoops and the food trucks on Tuesdays, but Mayor Barry says more needs to be done to make Civic Plaza the gathering place it could be. Civic Plaza is really the center of our city. We want it to be a center of activities for families and individuals. Mayor Barry says he wants to transform the plaza organically by making it a place where people want to be. Already, he says SMG, the group that manages the newly renovated convention center, will create more programming for families and individuals. But what about the plaza itself? Today, the city will announce a grant from Southwest Airlines that aims to help the space. Albuquerque is one of six cities nationwide to receive the Heart of the Community grant. It will fund amenities like tables and chairs for the plaza, outdoor reading rooms, information kiosks, things that will bring new life to the area. Southwest says they will work with the community to figure out a clear vision and programming platform for the space. You make a place where people want to go, where they feel welcome, where they feel safe, and they will show up and do interesting things. Now, Southwest says 
Place making, as it's called, is an up and coming movement that aims to serve as an engine for urban development, spurring sustainable, healthy neighborhoods. Back to you. All right, thanks so much, Catherine. Now, volunteer opportunities are available today from 9 to 4 on the plaza, and they will focus on planting. Let's turn to a live look over our nation's capital this morning. In just a few hours, a federal judge is expected to hear arguments there on whether to expand the freedom of the man who tried to assassinate President Reagan in 1981. John Hinckley Jr. has been undergoing treatment at a mental hospital since he was found not guilty by reason of insanity. Officials at the hospital in Washington have been slowly increasing Hinckley's independence. Hospital officials are expected to make recommendations on a request to allow him to live with his mother in Virginia. Hinckley shot and injured Reagan, then Press Secretary James Brady and two other people. Health workers are struggling to contain the biggest outbreak of the bird flu in the country in 30 years. Yeah, the highly infectious H5N2 virus is threatening egg and poultry businesses in about eight states so far. That includes Minnesota, South Dakota, and Iowa, where close to 4 million hens at a farm had to be euthanized. Mexico has now stopped importing live birds and eggs from Iowa as a precaution. Experts say the current strain does not pose a threat to humans. And it looks like all that severe weather hitting the south even caused mayhem for some passengers aboard a metro bus. It happened in Houston after a bus driver drove right into a flooded area. Over the weekend, heavy rain caused several streets to flood. And so when a bus driver tried to drive through what she thought was a small puddle, the vehicle quickly got engulfed with water. Passengers on board were forced to scramble for higher ground. The bus did eventually make it out, but officials with Metro Bus apologized, saying the driver was new and made the wrong decision. On to new video this morning, which shows a brawl, pretty incredible one at a high school in Tennessee. Yeah, take a look at this massive mob here. It was caught on several cell phone cameras. It captures the chaos as it all unfolds. Even officers were there trying to step in and defuse a situation. Now, media stations say the fight is believed to be related to incidents that happened off campus that then spilled over into the school. We don't know what those incidents are. At least eight students have been suspended. More could find themselves in the same trouble. The fight was even trending on Twitter. As you can imagine, several students were posting about it online. Looked very chaotic no there. Deal, no kidding. Wow. Mm -hmm. 